Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of Pilot Ninja. In this episode, Haley is going to walk you through all the new features and improvements of the Pilot Landing Page Builder. Pilot Ninja. Hi everyone, today we're going to show you some of the new and exciting features that come with Pilot's Lightning Landing Page Builder. So if you've watched one of our prior episodes, you would have seen how we configured the setup for this. Today we're going to jump right in and get to the exciting stuff. So to access landing pages, you can click on the landing pages navigation tab. We've added that to our navigation bar here. Um, and from this tab, you can click straight away new landing page. If you click on this tab, you'll also see a list of any landing pages and you can create a new one from in there as well. But something that's quite interesting is now you can actually access your landing pages through your Salesforce campaign. So I'll show you how to do that by just clicking on the campaigns tab here. And we're going to jump into our Pardot Ninja campaign. Now, as we scroll down our campaign record, you'll be able to see that we have added landing pages to our campaign record. So here you'll be able to see any landing page that is associated to this campaign. From here, you can also edit existing landing pages by clicking Edit in Builder, or you can create a new one, just like this. So we'll create one now. We'll call it Pardot Ninja Demo. Um, you can see that it's inherited the campaign here and you have the ability to add a vanity URL down below as well. We're not going to do that right now. We will just click save. Great. Okay. So now you can see that we've got Pardot Ninja Demo here. We are going to, as you hover, you can also see, you know, total views um, and you can see sort of an overview of, you know, any um, activity that's happened here, but we're going to click on edit in builder like so. So our lightning builder is opening net here. Now, if you have already had experience with using, um, you know, the Salesforce email lightning builder or the part of lightning builder for email um, it's very very similar so this will look uh, familiar to you um, we're going to talk through some of the features with this so let's start with images so you would have set up a Salesforce CMS channel that is your content management system channel um, and in that channel is where you're gonna, going to be hosting all your sort of images, um, files, documents um, for your users to access. So we'll show you how it all links together. If we try to add an image to our landing page here, just click on add component, click on image. You'll see on the right hand side, it has a button to select from CMS. So what happens here once we click this is it will bring up all the files that are stored in the channel. So we've got a Pardot Ninja channel. We've currently only got two files in here. Um, so it's very easy for us to select the file that we want to use. However, if you had a very large library, you would be able to just search this list via, you know, a keyword in the image title, for example, and it will just bring up any um, related images. So we're going to just click on this one here and save. It's also good to note that you can add content from within this um, content selector as well. So if you wanted to add um, new media, you could definitely do that from within here just by clicking that add content button. So let's jump back in. We'll select our image. We will save it. And there you go. Um, just note also on the right hand side, it gives you the opportunity to add, you know, alternate text or hyperlinks. Um, and you can also, you know, do a little playing around with the styling or positioning of, um, of your images. So next up, 
the drag and drop components. So the drag and drop uh, feature is probably the most talked about um, and the feature that makes uh, users the most excited because it allows those of us that don't have HTML experience to be able to still create a very attractive landing page without any coding required. So um, let's have a look at it in action. So if we want to drag and drop a button, it's as simple as this. You click on it, you'll be able to see that you can name the button. You can add a link for it and then you can style it. So we can change the font, we can change the font color, we can change the button color. So you have so many options um, if you wanted to play around with it. So there you go, it's really, really simple. Um, you can also add you know, a HTML block if you wanted to. So if you did have some HTML, you can drag and drop that in here too. And when you do that, it will give you the ability to enter your HTML code on the right hand side here. Um, what's really handy with this drag and drop builder is that every time you drag a component, it will add a row for you. Um, and when you have a row, you have a few options. So you can always format your row um, by adding columns and so forth by clicking this little, uh, I guess, icon on the left hand side. That really speaks to your columns for the row. So you can sort of move them up or down just leave ours as is. Um, you also have the ability to clone the row. So if you wanted to duplicate um, what you already have in there, just click this one and it's duplicated it. Then you have the ability with the arrows to move it up or down. These are identical, so it's hard to see, but you get the idea. And then you have the ability to delete a row as well, like this, which is great. Now, um, you know you can also drag and drop an image if you wanted to. Once again, it just brings up um, select from CMS. Um, you can also add a part of form, which we'll come back to in a second, because that's another feature. Um, and you can also add in some rich text. So when you do that, you can do whatever you want here. And there we go. So you can really sort of play around with, with what you want to do and have a bit of fun here. Cool. Let's style it. Maybe let's not make it so big. <laughs> cool. So we should be able to see this rich text come up. exciting here. There we go. Perfect. Cool. So we've got, you know, some rich text, you can add images in here. And that as you know, we've got, you know, HTML block, which I'm going to conveniently delete as I don't have any HTML code, we've got a button. Um, and you can add a row on its own. It's actually tricky to do this because you've already got rows, so you'll get an error message. So what I might do is just add it this way, add a row, perfect. Once again, it comes up with the formatting options, how many columns you would like in your row, if you'd like to distribute and reset the padding so they're all even, you can do that, which is great. I'm gonna make this two. I'm gonna distribute the columns and reset the padding, perfect. Great. Now, next feature, Pardot Forms. So this is really exciting as well. Gives you the ability to add your Pardot Forms to your landing page. So you will need to create your form first, um, just via the content and forms section as you normally would. Um, 
so you, you're building it in the form builder but the form's going to inherit the same style as the landing page so this really um really makes it easy less fuss we're going to drag a form component into our row beautiful and on the right hand side it's going to ask you for to select the form that you want to use so i've got this one here very basic this form um is just a very standard form but it gives you the idea of what we're working with so i'm gonna move this button down just for fun we've got a form that's great move this How about that? All right, cool. So um, now we've sort of had a bit of a, a play around here. Um, what we can do is have a look at our page and test its responsiveness. So um, really handy in this builder, you can actually click on this drop down here and you can click on tablets. Um, it's going to give you an idea of what this page is going to look like on a tablet, um, also on a phone. So um, any landing page that you create in the builder will be responsive. So it's going to automatically resize itself to, you know, display um, as, you know, flawlessly as possible um, on, you know, multiple devices. So um, this is, you know, this is, I guess, a really good step forward from, you know, breaking away from what we used to do with sort of standard templates and so forth. So um, do use this, it's going to give you a really good idea on how your page is going to look. Um, but after you've, you know, you've played around, you're happy with it, you'll want to just save it um, as always and head back to the landing page uh, with all the information. So when you save a landing page, it's going to save it as a draft, um, meaning that it's not live yet. Uh, to make it live, you need to jump up here into the Actions button drop down and you want to click on Publish. When you do that, you will notice that the status has changed to Published and a public link has been generated. So this is the link to your form. So if we just pop that into a separate tab, it's, sorry, landing page. If we pop that into a separate tab, it's gonna bring up our landing page for us. All right, so that's that. Now, let's say you needed to make some changes to your landing page. Um, you can just click this action drop down again and click edit in builder. And you can sort of, you know, play around as much as you want, delete what you need to delete. I'm gonna delete the button and we know that the button's gone. Great, save it, just like so. Now, if you head back to the landing page record, you will see that the status field has changed to publish changes pending. What that means is that your changes haven't yet gone live, so it is holding the existing um, landing page on that public link. Once you are ready to go, you can actually by all means push that live. But what this is good for is sort of setting up, um, I guess a, a flow in case you needed to get approval for any changes that are made. So it's good if you have an approval process um, that you need to you need to go through because you can definitely leave your you know new version sitting in here until it gets approved when you're ready to go you want to just click publish again and that's actually going to push that page live and it will replace the existing landing page the link won't change but if we do head over to that link now or i should just refresh the page the button's gone so you can actually see that those changes have been applied um, so that's really interesting. Um, from this action drop down as well, you have the ability to clone your layout, uh, your landing page, so you don't have to keep creating them. That's pretty handy if you've got a lot of components that re will remain the same. Um, and then you've also got the ability to 
unpublish the page. So we're gonna go ahead and do that just by clicking unpublish here. Just like so. When we do that, you'll see the page reverts back to being a draft and the public link disappears. If you wanna get rid of the page entirely, all you need to do at this point is click the drop down and delete becomes an available option for you and you would click delete and that would get rid of it. We're not gonna do that just yet because I do wanna show you some other things in this page here. So um, in the content tab, you'll also get to see sort of like a preview of what your landing page looks like. That could be handy for you. Um, and back in the details tab, you also have the ability to view the statistics of, you know, how that landing page is performing from, you know, views to, um, to clicks, any form submissions, um, any errors as well. You can get all that information just from this page, which is really handy. So, um, that's about, that's about it really in terms of our favorite features, um, we, you know, we sort of suggest just jumping in there and playing around with it. Um, we do suspect that, you know, Salesforce are going to, you know, keep enhancing this, which is wonderful, like they always do. Um, but we are really happy with um, the way that it's sort of functioning at the moment. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. I am going to actually just now show you how to delete the page by deleting it like so. It will be gone. Um, but I do want to thank you for watching and please let us know if you have any questions by adding a comment below. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks for watching that episode. We hope you got a lot of value out of it. Please don't forget to subscribe and engage with the content because a lot of it is driven by you guys, the user. So we need to know your feedback. Cheers.